Now, just the way the the commentary rotor worked out. I've been with JJ for the last couple of days. Thoroughly enjoyed the experience. So now I've switched over from American to European. Now you're back with the main man. Talking the main man. What a break this is for Jason Shaw. Just needs to play this with a bit of right spin. There you see, just coming off the rail. Doesn't need to go silly with the spin. Just make sure you get over enough. Now, talking about the brake call, I'm not surprised it was so efficient, and I'll tell you why. We've only got eight tables in operation now, as opposed to the 24 with which we started the tournament. Still plenty of tables vacant out there. So Jason Shaw turned up around 45 minutes ago and started just practicing his brake off. Now, that's got a a tedious thing to do with pool when you've got no one to re-rack the balls for you. He was breaking, sticking them back together, breaking. He worked it all out, and he's immediately reaping the rewards. Yeah, he's just trying to make sure he's finding that head ball, the one ball, as square on as possible, because we all know the wing ball's flying in the pocket. It's dead, that's what we call it. When we say it's dead, it's just going to go straight in the pocket. So it's imperative you do not lose the cue ball so around the tables over on table two just started Mika Immonen against Chris Alexander Albin Auschen 6-4 up on Ralph Suke Robbie Capito still on the hill against Tobias Bongers 8-5 now though that's getting a little closer Petri Makinen former World Cup of Pool winner for Finland he's 8-5 up on Reina La from Estonia, Imran Majid and Marco Schuter. That's on table four. They're just getting underway as well. Uh oh, it's close. Well, how did that not fall in the end? It even had the right spin where you thought the pocket was going to grab it. But I think he's titty hooked, Phil. I was going to say, say that again, but perhaps don't say that again. Well, the term titty is what they call in America the jaw. I'm not really sure why, but that's what they say. Over on table two, the lag is just starting. That is available on Matron Pool YouTube channel. That's between Mika Immonen and Chris Alexander. So that's a good match. Chris Alexander is a bit of an unknown, but he's a dangerous player. Yeah, the table two action today, which will be really interesting, is also available on the Matchroom the Weibo channel in China. Uh, it's a beautiful safety shot from Camino. He's a talented young Spanish player. We're so used to seeing Alcady and Sanchez, but he actually should have won a match on this table. I think it was yesterday. He missed the eight ball at Hill Hill. But he's still going. Yeah, that was against Dennis Acolio. Basically, Camino led 5-0 and after a golden break in the ninth rack, 7-2. But then Acolio came back to lead 8-7. As Carl said, it looked like going hill-hill. But Camino missed the eight. He's got the jump cue because it's not easy to go and kick this ball. Now, is he trying to pop this ball? He's trying to hit the left side, I believe. Yeah, he's hit it a little bit too thick. Now, what's he left? Has he got away with it? Yeah, you would say he has. I mean, obviously, Jonas can play a safety, but he's not left a pot.
two more days to go after this, Carl, and already so many big names have exited the tournament. The most recent, of course, Alexander Kazakis. Also, Omar Al Shaheen, Dennis Grabber, Kelly Fisher, Billy Thorpe, Chris Melling, Chris Reinholdt, and most surprising of the lot to me, especially how early he departed, Copen Yee. Yeah, that's the biggest story of this event so far. Copen Yee is what me personally would describe as the top tier, the, the number one tier, if you like, of the pool players. The rest of them are still in, the likes of Jason Shaw, Joshua Filler, SVB, Albin Ocean, Dennis Orcolo. Another player to exit in the last few seconds, as you were speaking, Carl. Reina La from Estonia, beaten 9-5 by Petri Makinen. You know, we're talking about the top tier players. Albin Ocean, he's playing a legend of the game. He's playing Ralph Suke. That match is 6-5 to Albin, the loser of that. Goes home. It's Judgment Day here on day four of the UK Open Nine Ball Championships. Who is going to make it to the final 16? That starts tomorrow. Yeah, as does the TV coverage on Sky Sports Action. Only three tables will be in operation then, and it will be down to the, the business end. I must say, though, I've really enjoyed these four days when we've had so much action. You don't know where to look first. That was a good pot. They can always be a little bit awkward going up past the, the side pocket. Needs an angle, because he wants to get the cue ball over towards where the magic rack is on the side left rail. So that's why he's having a good look at this potting angle. He wants to play a stop shot and just leave that natural path where he can stun down the table. And that's perfect. This is all about speed and line. It's nice that the magic rack's actually there. You can use that as a bit of a, a target. I was speaking to Gary Wilson yesterday, Phil, and had a right good chat with him, and he's enjoyed his week here. And he, during the chat, he was saying he thinks the diamond should be took off the table. Feels like maybe it's a bit of an aiming system. Yeah, I spoke with Gary last night, actually. Myself and Michael McMullen were having dinner, and he came over. And you're right, he really did enjoy it. And I think next time he plays in one of these, and there will be a next time, he's going to have the, the correct cue, the right equipment, and I think he could be a little more dangerous. Jonas Suto Camino is dangerous. He's only 20 years of age. He's a fine prospect, and he's back on level terms with Jason Shaw at one rack each. Yeah, he likes to get on with the game as well. He plays very quick. Often when a player plays fairly quick, that means they just see the shots a lot quicker. It's a little bit more of a natural thing at the table. Jason's got his work cut out in this match. It's not going to be plain sailing. And this round where Jason and Jonas are at, they've got to win four matches today to qualify for that final 16. But of course... The old cliche, it's one at a time. Suke's at the table to tie the match up against Albin Ocean. That is a battle of two European heavyweights. This is a good break, good cue ball control. And often, as we see, the one ball comes round two or three rails and sets up nicely for a shot. And you see one off the top rail comes over to the side. Yeah, talking about... Camino's history in the tournament. We mentioned the eight ball missed yesterday when he had a chance for Hild Hill against Dennis Acolio. 
So that's his one defeat, but he's had four victories. Started out with a couple of wins over Frenchman, Alex Montpellier and Benjamin Belhassen, 9-3. Then he lost to Ocolio, but bounced back really well, overcoming Nikos Economopoulos, former Moscone Cup player from Greece. And then Luke Garland to be in this round. And Luke Garland was one of the players responsible for the departure of Copigny. Yeah, he played very well. I walked over to the end of that match. I decided to go and get a feel of this wonderful arena at the Copper Box. I know every player I spoke to, they've all said high things about this. It's obviously easy to, to get to in London. Airports and tubes and trains and there's a lot going on around here restaurants and bars and it's been a it's been a success Jonas he's not messing about this is what he can do he can get on a little roll now it all depends on what angle he's got he's either going to play for the left centre pocket or if the angle allows him to, there you see he's just signalling with his cue, he'll play to the top right pocket his decision will be made purely on what natural angle he has that's fine he's played a little stun shot through that gap, talented player this kid, he really is, did you say he was just 20 years of age Phil? Yeah and talking of that, another 20 year old Robbie Capito, just this second has completed victory over Tobias Bongas, 9-6. So Hong Kong, China have two players, two youthful players, with Capito and Loho Sum still involved. There's a lot of young pool players now who play this game and they're playing at a high level, they really are. And then, of course, at the other end of the spectrum, we had the the joyful news yesterday that representing the Philippines at the World Cup of Pool will be 67-year-old Efren Reyes. Simply incredible. Bata Reyes is back on your screens in roughly it's around three weeks' time, right, Phil? Yeah, mid-June, 14th to the 19th, mark it in the diary. Yanis Suta Camino here. Well, he didn't get up in the opening rack. It was a break and run out from Jason Shaw. Since then, though, the young Spaniard has made his mark. Yeah, tickets are still available. If you head over to matchroompool.com for the World Cup of Pool, that is a treat, that event. Often throws up a lot of surprises. There you see, look at Efren Batareas with Biado. They're going to be a dangerous team. Forget that he's 67. What a week that is going to be. Alternate shots, scotch doubles. There'll be 20, plenty of tweaks that week. Fantastic tournament, it really is. There you see again, look at this one ball. Jason's going to need some help off the seven. And it isn't there. Jason Shaw is going to be at the World Cup of Pool, partnering Elliot Sanderson. Elliot known as the shouter, but he was quickly silenced here. Yeah, just look at the table layout. We've not really seen many breaks where we've had clusters and tricky layouts. It's been a bit of a break and run. Fest over the first four days. I mean, you still got to hold yourself together and knock the balls in, of course. Well, if you're just joining us and you missed the opening match on our stream, that was remarkable. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, after benefiting from a Alexander Kazakis scratch in the sixth rack, made it three each and then broke and ran the next six racks consecutively to cross the finishing line in considerable style.
it is quite apparent. Camino is not intimidated by the reputation, the towering reputation of Jason Shaw. The young man leads 3-1. Over on table two, it's 2-0 two for Chris Alexander over Mika Immanen. 2-0 also for Marco Tutor of Holland against Imran Majid. Albin Auschen and Ralph Suke locked together at six racks each. Still to put racks on the board. Jake Newlove against Jose Alberto Delgado. Tyler Steyer against Max Lechner. Ko Pin Chung against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, who's been the busiest player here. And Petri Makinen is just starting out against Naoki Oi. Tell you what, Cole, that's okay. Yeah, it's another shot. At least he ran the ball, did kick the cue ball. Looked like it was going to go in the pocket. He would have been a little bit worried. But again, look at the, the split he's got. Jason's just a spectator at the moment. He's got to hope a miss comes from somewhere. Or a funny little break but it just doesn't look like it's going to happen yet, does it? Now, if the seven goes in the side pocket, it does look like it will from there. That's going to make life so much easier in this run out. Just got to avoid cannon in the three here. That's nicely done. Squeezes round the back. And if he's straight, he can just draw straight back for the four. So this is worrying times for sure, fans. He's got some talent, this young kid. The one thing Shaw doesn't want is for this match to develop into the kind of contest where he was victimised in the Whirlpool Masters against Mieszka Fatunski, where Jason hardly had a shot and lost 7-2. Missed a, a tricky two ball, I recall, early on, and basically that was that. Plays at a very pleasing pace, doesn't it? Very easy on the eye, this. And it's 4-1, Phil, just like that. Yeah, very good indeed. He's the pride of the Illusions Pool Hall back in Spain, and he's under no illusion as to what he needs to do in this match. Play well, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's fallen up. He's a former world under-19 champion. Beat Sanyan Pilovanovic in the final there three years ago. That was over in Cyprus. This year, well, in smaller events in Louisiana and Texas, he's had top five finishes. Had a top ten finish also on the Euro Tour at the Lasco Open. He's more than capable. One ball's coming again. Oh, it's going to be tight as he got a shot. I'm just looking at Jason's face. He's giving nothing away. I'll say that, it's just giving me a little glance in combox. He's actually looking at me there. <laughs> As if to say, I might not get out of my chair here. That's funny, that. the strength and depth in Spain. We've talked about Francisco Sanchez Ruiz and David Alcady. Jose Alberto Delgado is playing at the moment on the one-loss side. 
Jonas Suto Camino. Juan Carlos Exposito didn't do badly here either. to draw this off the top rail oh he doesn't he could pinch a bit worst case scenario here would be he runs the cue ball a little short on the right hand side of this eight ball even if he does that it goes in the top pocket yeah he's going to play in the top but he has landed short of that line, so the cue ball is going to be running away. I don't think he can power this in. He might just have to pinch the cue ball, leave it near the eight, and just take a nine. That would guarantee the pot. He's top. He's topping it. Well, that's the wrong shot for me. He has lost the plot there. He should have pinched it and left himself a trickier nine on these pockets. This is the chance Jason has been sat waiting for. I am astounded. Talk about playing with fire. What a gift for Jason Shaw, and that could be a real quintessential tight turner. Giannis Suto Camino should have been 5-1 ahead, but then the brain freeze, the, the scratch on the eight, and Jason Shaw tidying up, as everyone expected. So he's only two behind, and he gets to break off in the seventh. Right now, feeling relief. Yeah, is that going to cost Jonas a few racks here? One thing for certain, it has changed the match a little bit, even though we don't know what's going to go on on this break. But it looked like he was going to go 5-1 up, and would it have been a four-pack? I think it was, wasn't it? It would have been. The eight ball again, causing Camino consternation. He has got a shot, but the cue ball's tracked towards that top rail. There you see it got kissed at first. He would have probably thought this five ball was going to ruin it, but he does have a shot here. It's not easy. He might have to jack down as well. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's just going to try and kill the cue ball, and he wants to play this as soft as possible. It's a tricky shot. Oh, well done. Nice shot. I love watching Jason Shaw play. He's got such freedom. And he's a simply wonderful potter. Eagle Eye. One of the most appropriate nicknames, I think, in the sport. This is always a nice shot. Often you see amateurs get too much into that, this ball and they can scratch in the right and side pocket. That you could see, you see how it's tracking towards the right and side. So you've got to be a little bit careful on that type of shot. He's a little straight. Is he going to top or just draw back to where the cue ball is now? Oh, he's under hit that. He has under hit that a little bit. I want it to come a bit further back up to kind of where the cue ball was. He's going to play two rails, play for the eight in the top left. Simultaneous success for the Brits on the two show tables. I'll tell you about it in a second when this nine ball goes in. Shaw, just one behind now at 4-3. Yes, on the other table, Chris Alexander leads Mika Eminen 3-0. He was really fortunate, actually, right at the end of the the third rack, he played a poor positional shot. The, the cue ball came very close to the nine, but it was available to the side, and Alexander knocked it in, so 3-0 up on the former world champion. Other scores for you, Albin Auschen now on the hill. 
against Ralph Suke. 8-6 the scoreline there. Marco Tutor, 3-1 up on Imran Majid. Jake Newlove and Jose Alberto Delgado, one each. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz on a roll. He's 1-0 up against Ko Ping Chung. And Nayuki Oi has won the first rack against Petri Makinen. There's always a debate in the world of pool, alternate break or winner breaks, but I've been around the block once or twice and it has to be winner breaks for the simple reason. Camino's 4-1 up, he makes a poor shot on the eight ball and in alternate break, it would have been 4-2 and on an occasion it could have been his break. So he makes a glaring error and it might have been his break next. So then he just gets back to the table, breaks off, gets an easy layout, and runs the table 5 2. No, I'm not having that. Now he's got to sit in his chair and he's thinking about his mistake. Even if Jason doesn't get a shot on the lowest ball, he can play a tricky push, he can play a good safety. The pressure is always on in winner breaks. Now, there was a slight delay to the start of this rack. That was because Jason Shaw was asking, because he's feeling a little bit chilly, could he play with his jacket on? And the answer was no. Chilly? I mean, he's sporting one of the best dad bods you've ever seen. We're not chilly, are we, Phil? Well, too much blubber on me to be chilly. Wow. Well. That nearly was one of the one of the rarest dry breaks we ever seen then, but he's potted one. Off table news, interesting news. Just received it. The World Cup of Pool, the Australian team, will not feature Justin Sage. That's a pity. He's a good guy, Justin. Instead, the team will be Ivan Meng Lee, and he will partner James Giordardis. George Diardis. George Diardis, third time lucky. There we are. Yeah, Jason's just wondering whether he should draw back out into the centre of the table. I think that's what he's going to go for. Or does he try and sneak past the five? That's what he's played. He's played it well. He just took a bit of time there because he knew that was such a, a touch-feel shot. So he just wanted to make sure he was in the right frame of mind. I think I've got the the reason for him wanting to put the jacket on. Maybe he wanted to put the US Open jacket on and intimidate his opponent. I've won this, lad. Don't mess with me. <laughs> well, the green jacket. Is that what you're saying he wanted to wear? <laughs> Now, this proves my point. If Jason clears the table, it's 4-4, and that huge mistake from Camino is magnified. Alternate break. Well, it just wouldn't happen. It really wouldn't. I'm not just saying this to agree with you blindly, Carl. I absolutely agree. Winner breaks all day long. just seems to me that... With an alternate break, it's artificial. Winner breaks, that's the way forward. Yeah, and as soon as um, we can get some sort of win the lag, run the set prize, which will come, I, I firmly believe it will do. That will add a bit more spice to this. This for 4-4. It is 4-4. Shaw's back in this match. And for Jonas Suter Camino, it is all about, all about that eight ball. So there, extra clothing coming in. I must be honest, we're above the table where Jason Shaw is playing his trade at the moment. I'm not particularly chilly, are you, Carl? No, I'm way too um, fat for that. <laughs> Well, please don't say you're fat, because if you're fat, I don't know where I am. I don't think there's a, a descriptive term 
beginneth. Let me give you these latest scores. Naoki Oi, 2 0 up on Petri Makinen. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, 2 0 up on Koping Chung. 3 2 now for Marco Schuter over Imran Majid. 2 1, Jose Alberto Delgado over Jake Newlove. Max Lechner has taken the opening rack against Tyler Steyer. And Chris Alexander still 3 0 up on Mika Imanen on table two. If you want to see that action, just a reminder. It is available on the Matrim Pool YouTube channel and also on the Matrim channel on the Weibo platform. So both players have, have left the arena. One thing we can tell you, Chris Alexander now 4-0 up on Mika Imanen. Chris Alexander was one of those <coughs> responsible for the exit of a player we've been talking about during this commentary call. He beat Gary Wilson. Clearly a very capable sort. Now this little break in play gives us the opportunity to tell you about the season that Jason Shaw's had. And it's not been a bad one at all. He won the Turning Stone Classic early. He also won the Pro Players Championship at Valley Forge or at the, the Oaks Convention Centre, I should say, near Philadelphia much more recently and he's had some big finishes in other events did really well at the Derby City Classic third in the Bigfoot second in the Banks fourth in the one pocket second in the master of the table after finishing fourth in the nine ball he was third in the Premier League pool we had at Milton Keynes I think he was most disappointed though wasn't he to be beaten in the last 32 of the World Nine Ball Championship. Yeah, I had a little chat with him before, a little interview for my channel, and I just said he seemed to always be playing well. Sometimes just the game can be against you. You've got to take it when it's on your side. So there you see Jason Shaw. He's now sporting a longer sleeve jacket. Where's the two ball going to go? This looks like it's going to be good. Camino, he's been sat in his chair since that horror eight ball. And the instant he scratched, you couldn't help but feel as though that was going to be a pivotal moment. And it's the eight ball haunting him again. We've mentioned this before, I'll repeat in his third match in the tournament, which was yesterday. He had the chance to make it hill-hill against Dennis Ocolio and missed the eight ball. Funnily enough, to the, the same pocket he knocked the eight ball into this time when he had the scratch. Nice shot there. That would give Jason a big margin for error. Spinning the cue ball with right spin. Three rails. Looks like he's playing at the type of rhythm that he would do at the Moscone Cup. I feel like that's when he plays his best at the, with this rhythm, this pace. Not so much rushing around the table, just a nice walk. And if things land a little funny, he gets back up and just double checks to make sure. Just like that, this nine ball for the lead. How quickly the complexion of a match can change, especially when Jason Shaw is involved. He was 4-1 down, looked in trouble. Now he leads 5-4. We could be getting very close to the conclusion of that epic between Albin Auschen and Ralph Suke. Really lengthy match. But it's over now. Auschen prevails. Last year's world champion still battling away. I'm afraid, though, we say goodbye to Ralph Suke. Well, Ralph will be back. 
course. Yeah, just to confirm, 9-6-4 Aushin over Suke. The thing with Shaw here, he just wants to hand as much punishment as possible to Camino. Keep him tied up, keep him cold, and keep him thinking about that, what I thought was a rash decision with position on the eight ball that was always dangerous. Yeah, it was the wrong shot. It's as simple as that. He didn't need to do that. He was playing well. He's a good potter. And this is his first shot since that eight ball mistake. Kicking at the one. But of course, he's still in this match. It's 5-4. All to play for. Rule number one, hit the one ball. There's a few balls at the bottom end of the table, so things can happen. That's what a pool player is always looking for. There you see, there's balls at the bottom. I think Jason can see an edge. Can he pop the ball? That's why it's imperative you hit the ball. The more balls that are on the table when you're kicking, the more good things that can happen. Can Shaw put the one in the top left? He can, and this will go in. No, it won't go in. I thought the slide would have took it in on this table, but it stayed up. Carl, when we were commentating together on day one, that would have gone in. But this is day four when they've tightened. Yeah, I mean, having a look at the overhead, it should never go in, don't get me wrong. But I was with you, Phil. Seen them slide in. Over on table two, if some of you are watching, you'll have just seen Mika Immern scratch on the break. He's playing Chris Alexander. And that match is 4-1 to Chris. This is a big shot now for Jonas. He's long on this two. He's got to kind of play it soft-ish because he needs to stay on the three ball into the top right corner. This is a tester. So part one of the test is passed. Part two coming up. Yeah, this is not too bad. Just pop the ball with a bit of top spin. Cue ball will run in between the green and the pink. For the pink in the side. And ironically, that's the the kind of nine ball that Camino would have had had he played more conservatively in terms of position off the eight when he scratched. He's a good potter. I don't know why he tried to get so close to the nine. Now they're trying to forget about that and just get back onto level terms. I'll tell you what, Phil, I think Jason's called it. I've all of a sudden got a little bit nippy in here. I'm going to put my jumper on. No eight ball issues on this occasion. <coughs> and there it is. All of this talk of people being cold. Well, Giannis Suto Camino was kept cold for three racks, but not in the tenth. That was vital for him to get a foothold, and he has done. It is level terms, 5-5. Five, five. This match has been set up beautifully, 5-5. Five, five. Both players run packages. Both players have missed a crucial ball. Well, Jonas didn't miss the ball, but he scrapped. So both players have made key error. And both have run packages. It's 5-5. Five, five. On the outside table is the most advanced match. 
features Naoki Oi, who's 5 0 up on Petri Makinen. So what's he faced with here? Nine balls going towards the left. Oh, he's teeing this one ball up nicely, isn't he? This is looking good for Jonas now. Needs to try and get back over on this two. Six ball. Well, he could play two rails and back for the two in the bottom right. Playing for the bottom left could get a little bit funky. That's what he's played. Any contact on the seven, he should be okay. Good shot. It's no exaggeration to say, considering the way he's performed, had he not had that rush of blood and scratched on the eight, this match could have been over by now. Yeah, probably just wants to slow down a little bit from time to time. Especially when it gets to the crucial point of the game like this. This is a thin one, needs to judge this well. This shot can get away from you. That's why he's played off two rails. This looks good. Well, I'll tell you what, from tomorrow onwards, we've got the introduction of the 30-second shot clock, and it will not hinder the young Spaniard at all. No, I think he wants a 10-second shot clock. And he's practically running round the table. Tucking the, the shirt in to make sure there's no illegal contact with the eight. Another swing in fortunes. This time it's Jonas, Simi Jonas Suto Camino who takes a 6 5 lead. So before this, Jason Shaw had played four matches here. He was on the, the main match table when he beat Stephen Follen from Canada 9 1. Then he had a, a tough match against Denmark's Mickey Kraus. Came through that 9 7, but then hit a roadblock. Lost 9-5 to Miesko Fatunski yesterday. And it was Fatunski who also beat him convincingly in the first round of the, the World Masters in Gibraltar a couple of weeks ago. By the way, Naoki Oi, after 22 minutes, leads Petri Makinen 6-0. 22 minutes, six racks. Oh, he's got this one ball tracking over to that side of the table every single break shot. He has really got this break dialed down. Look at this. So when Jason had that chance and he missed the one ball at 5-4, how costly is that going to be? He's lost the cue ball a little bit here. Where's it going to finish? It's not great. He's got a bit too much angle here, I think. I think he's going to have to try and pop this ball and just leave the cue ball anywhere in the centre for a shot on the five. Oh, he's played with loads of spin. He's a confident young man. I also like his technique under pressure. It's... One that repeats. <laughs> Players with 
three names tend to go by their initials sometimes SVB and FSR. What about JSC? A OK. Now we're really in the meaty part of this match now, aren't we? It's going to be 7 5, and this is just going to come down to one or two little rolls now at the end of this match. 7 5 to the 20 year old Spaniard. It really has been impressive. It's the kind of match where if you make a mistake, it doesn't cost you just that rack, it costs you plenty of others in the future as well. We saw it with Camino's scratch on the eight. He was 4-1 ahead, suddenly he was 5-4 down, but then Shaw missed the one ball at the start of the 10th rack, and now he's facing a deficit. You can see here the brackets, how it's working out. Coping Chung and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, two racks each. Loho Sum and Victor Zielinski, they're still involved in the first rack, I believe. So much pool today, and it's all big names, all talented players, head-to-head. -head. Tyler Steyer's 2-1 up on Max Lechner. Tyler Steyer lost very early on in the, the winner's bracket. He's played a lot of matches in the loser's side. He's been battling away. Look at the one ball again, though. I know the cue ball's got kicked, but that one ball... He's setting it up over on that side of the table time and time again. Oh, and the three balls helping. This is unmissable. Really is. That is a huge pocket. There you see. Use the edge of the three. He needs this to bounce. Oh, he's on the two. This is this is good. This is real good. Just being hypothetical here, our co-commentator. Jeremy Jones is the US Moscone Cup captain. Let's just say Yanis Suter Camino. Let's just say he was American. The way he plays the game, I think Jeremy would love to have him in the side. That's how good he is. But he's not American. I thought you'd say that. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to see Jonas where he's at on on the four-inch pocket like we used at the Masters and maybe the break's not as predictable as this because he's going to be playing with a lot of confidence. I mean, every break, I mean, it is a skill what he's doing. I'm not taking that away from him. Of course, it is. To keep getting the one ball where, where he's getting it, he's showing you that he's so consistent at that break and he's going to be on the hill. The fight back from Shaw was on. He did have a chance on that one. He rattled it. And he's been watching since. So, so convincing. He made a mental error in the sixth rack when he tried to do too much positionally in potting the eight ball. Apart from that, he has been eye-catchingly good. Jason Shaw is three racks behind, a possible four to play. No room for error. Sure, facing possible, well, you have to say probable elimination. No Kioi. 7 0 up on Petri Makinen in 28 minutes. Coping Chung, 3 2 up on Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Jose Alberto Delgado, 4 2 up on Jake Newlove. Eklund Kachi has won the first rack against Alexa Pashelsh. Tyler Steyer still 2 1 up on Max Lechner. Marco Schuter 5 3 up on Imran Majid. And now Mika Imran has made a really good comeback against Chris Alexander. Alexander led 4 0. Now, though, for Alexander, it's not so great. It's 4 4. Is Shaw going to get back out of his seat? Look at the one ball again. It was coming over to that same side. How many times has he put that in that exact same place, Phil? Simply incredible. Shaw 
Short's got a lifeline. Will he go for the bank? Is he going to go out full-blooded or is he playing safe? Well, he's played safe, but it's not a good one. Yeah, this is the thing what I kind of felt with, with these sort of players. They look good on these generous pockets with an easy break, but when it comes to situations like that, maybe that's where they're still a little bit weak. But purely for his potting abilities and his positional abilities, he's a really dangerous opponent. Yeah, he is a dangerous opponent. I'm not shocked to see him at this stage of this event. But that is the class of the top tier players. Yes, Jason might be losing, but just that shot alone where you've got to spin the cue ball full length slow to track it to rails. Great shot. And Shaw needs to win four racks in succession to pull this one out of the fire. And he's already won four racks in succession in this match. From 4-1 down to 5-4 ahead. And now, now this could be the big changing point. Yeah, we did see Jonas on this table. I can't remember who it was against, but it was 8-all. And he missed the 8-ball to win. He ended up losing that match. Can you remember who he lost to, Phil? Well, it was... Not eight all, it was eight seven down. It was to make it eight all against Dennis Acolio. Yes, that's the one. That's correct. So Jason's just got to think, keeping this match. Obviously, if he clears these eight six and then a break on eight seven, Jonas is going to be feeling it then. And Shaw has built up a reputation of producing numerous unlikely comebacks over the years. So being in this situation will not phase him. Wants to be straight or just off straight. That way he can play the seven in the bottom right. Now, we've spoke about Jonas's break where he keeps getting that one ball of two to three rails on the left side. And you might be wondering why Jason's not doing that. Well, that's just simply down to the fact that Jonas has, has, has learned to do that break. It's not as easy as what he's, he's making it look. So it is going to be 8-6. I always like 8-6, Phil, in a race to nine. feel like it's as good as Hill Hill. There's no clear favourite, especially in winner breaks. Can sure pull this one out of the bag. Well, I personally think he can. And more importantly, I think Giannis Suta Camino will think he can as well. Worrying times for the Spaniard, despite the impressiveness of his display thus far. Petri Mackinen on table 14 isn't going to be whitewashed. It's now 7-1 for Naoki Oi over the fin. 3-3 Coping Chung and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. 3-1 for Tyler Steyer over Max Lechner. Now, how is Jason going to break these balls? Is he going pace? Or is he trying? Yeah, see, it's not easy to get the one ball where Jonas is getting it. You could see the one ball hit before. Well, Jason was putting his arms up. I'm not really sure why. He thought he was going to be stymied. Then all of a sudden he realised he wasn't. And he, he put his arms down pronto. Yeah, but I mean, listen, I'm not saying you, I've never done that. But, you know, pool's a game where you break the balls and you get what the table gives you. So... You've just got to try and get on with it. Listen, I've done that. I've been guilty of that. I've smashed a few cues off the break. Don't get me wrong, but it's easy sat here. I think the lesson of that is don't make any gesticulations until the balls have stopped rolling. Yeah, exactly, Phil. That's correct. Tricky shot here, though. 
I know it doesn't look tricky, but when the ball's touching the rail, you feel like you've got to hit it a bit cleaner than when it's just off, as mad as, as that sounds. And it doesn't look like he can get too close to the five unless he really gives this some. So this is a big shot coming up for Jay. Well, there you go. What a mistake. What a mistake that is. He's tried to get too giddy. He should have just potted it and left the thin five. He's meant to hit centre of the cue ball there and he's ended up hitting high. Big shot coming up. He's overspun it. Here comes the drama. Where's the cue ball? Shaw's still in this match. That was a chance to win. Wasn't easy, but it was a chance. Lifeline for sure. How did the white miss the eight ball? Let head shaking begin. And you know, he's that good, Jason Shaw. Come Sunday night, if he lifts the trophy, we'll be thinking about that. Yeah, when you play a tournament like this with 2-5-6 and you play however, ma however many matches you would play to win the event, you're not going to steamroll every opponent. You're going to go through the motions. You're going to win a classic. You're going to win a hill hill. You're probably going to win a 9-0. You're going to see it all, just like the world champ did when he beat Mika 10-3 down to win 11-10, and now he's the world champ. So this will happen. Shaw's just got to rely on his experience. He knows Jonas can be a little shaky near the end of a match. It's 8-7. Just what we want to see. Giannis Suto Camino wouldn't agree, but I think for the neutrals, this is brewing up beautifully. Jason Shaw to break in the 16th rack, looking to make it hill hill. By the way, whoever comes through this contest will take on next either Mika Imminen or Chris Alexander. Right now, looking like Imminen. He was 4 0 down the fin, now he leads 6 4. Yeah, Mika's turned that match around. Here you can see some of the the scores and the way the, the brackets work out. Ko Ping Chung and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz are three racks each. I don't think we'll ever see Francisco Sanchez Ruiz practicing a great amount between matches because <laughs> he's having his practice in the matches. He's playing so often having had that really poor start to the tournament, just clung on to life in the event. And it seems every time you look up, he's on the scoreboard somewhere. Decided to go with more power. Cue ball's got kicked. Needs this one to stop. Doesn't want it on the rail. This makes this shot a lot easier than if it was glued to the rail. Jason's actually been breaking with his playing cue. Decided not to use his break cue. There's an interesting match brewing between two Americans. They've not started just yet. It's Dominguez and Wolford. That is purely down to the basis of the end of the year. Both players want to make that Moscone Cup team. So a little win there would... Well, it would get JJ's... Um, is perking up a little bit. Big shot for sure. He's kissed the two. He didn't want to. Now, as long as he can get his cue into the cue ball and hit it low, it should be OK. Let's just see where his bridge jam goes. Just kind of OK. Now, is he going to play for the two down the rail or is he going to play for the top right pocket? He's playing for the top right pocket. Needs his cue ball to roll. It's short pace, this short pace. He's under it. it. He had the full half of the table to land in. Could have landed way down the table there. 
the most glaring mistake he made against Fortunski in the World Masters was a missed two ball, not dissimilar to that, to a different pocket. But it was with slightly awkward queuing. He overcut that one. As for the, the two here, well, it's just a, a positional misjudgment that causes him to play a containing safety. And one has to say he's played it pretty well. Yeah, that's the class right there. You've got to regroup and just make sure you lay a good safety. Now, Camino's got to be careful here. He's going to go two rails. Yeah, so he's going to come off the top rail and try and hit the three full. But he's got to be careful. The scratch is on top left pocket. Watch the cue ball. It could flirt with the top left pocket. is nasty this is thin at first glance it was it looked like jason was going to have a pretty easy shot but you can see it in his face he knows this is nasty it's not easy to play a good safety when it comes to this family of shots though i've seen shaw pull off some absolute crackers but as you say even for him, it's high tariff. Yeah, the problem what he's scared of is if he plays it with left English to go in between the pink and the green, because of the pace he's got to play it, the cue ball's going to be going over towards the top right and pocket, certainly towards the top rail. So that's what's making Jason stall a little bit. It's not easy to play safe, though. He might just have to go for this and chance his arm a little bit. He could actually pot it and maybe send the cue ball into the pink four. Such a good potter. I think he's got to put everything into the pot here. Cue ball into the pink four. If I was going to nominate someone to pot a ball of this nature, he would be very near the top of the list. Not just a of this nature in this kind of situation when the pressure is extreme. Yeah, and we're not using a shot clock, and I think in this particular instance, I think this is good. I'm actually a fan of, if it's Hill, he'll get rid of the shot clock for the last rack, because there's so much pressure on the situation. I think it's important he gets a little bit more time. He's playing the cue ball into the four here. Big shot. He's missed it. He's missed the ball. Is the cue ball going to run behind the seven? It is. Oh, my word. We have seen it all. This match, it's been a big standard, Phil, but we have seen it all. He's got to go Hill Hill, surely. The things you see in nine ball pool, you don't see it in any other game on a pool table. Can he hit the three? He's got to play it hard, or else he's going to miss this. Yeah, he's going to miss it. We could be going Hill Hill where the ball's going to finish. They're going to finish OK. Carl, that was remarkable as he got down to play that shot. I couldn't see any way, geometrically, he could hit the three. Not the way he was playing it. Well, from the, the flute hook... Shaw is now in to take it to the wire. Yeah, if you're watching, you're thinking that's quite harsh what's happened to Jonas. Let's not forget where he kicked it. He left Jason in such a tricky spot. And he's also missed a ball for the match. It wasn't an easy ball. But at this level, chances are chances. This is going to go hill hill. What a classic match this has been. For me, it's been the match of the tournament so far. Absolutely concur. And although the great Jason Shaw is breaking off in the deciding rack, you just get the feeling the way things have gone, there could be another twist yet. He looks under it, doesn't he? He's sat there shaking his head. He knows he's had a chance for the match. 
You also know Shaw's been a little bit fortunate in that rack. But it's Hill Hill. Quickly, and the scores. Mika Eminen now 7-4 up on Chris Alexander over on table two. He was 4-0 down, remember. Marco Schuter 5-4 up on Imran Majid. Tyler Styers lead over Max Lechner reduced to 3-2. Alexa Pashalsh 2-1 up on Eklund Kachi. Jose Alberto Delgado 5-4 up on Jake Newlove. Naoki Oi on the hill at 8-3 against Petri Makinen. 3-3, Coping Chung, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Oh, I thought the cue ball was going to get kicked then. Into the side. The seven balls come and spoil it for Jason. He thought it was going to get an easy shot. Well, I'm not saying it was an easy shot, but now, what do you play here? If this was an exhibition, he'd go rail first off the seven and pop the one. But of course, he's not going to do that here. All right, let's have a look. What's he got? If he's going to play safe, he's got to try and play a safety where he's guaranteed a good one ball. So, stunning the cue ball over towards the eight looks like an option at first, but then it doesn't because it's hard to see where the one ball is going to finish. This looks awkward. It actually looks really awkward. Playing the one onto the brown seven as a combination, just because of the distance and the angle he's got, he's awful as well. Yeah, this looks awkward. He can't bank the one up table past the nine because the cue ball's going to run into the blue two, so that doesn't offer anything savvy. And when there's no more room for manoeuvre or mistake, it's so easy to second guess yourself when it comes to making a, a shot selection decision well this kind of proves my point what I was saying before Hill Hill if he was playing with a shot clock you're just rushing this shot and, and this shot needs some serious thought because it's landed it's landed awkward so what's he going to play here let's have a look oh, well he's not played this good he's not played good at all so this is a chance Try to get the cue ball over onto that rail. What was worrying him is where the one ball was going, though. He knew it wasn't really going in a safe spot. Maybe he could have just banked the one past the two onto the right side rail. Big shot coming up. And it's a good pot. This is a chance now. He's got a combo, two onto the brown seven. If he makes this, the four to the six, and then the eight to the nine is really only where it can go wrong. So when it's all said and done, Shaw's played a bad safety at Hill Hill. Mika Imminen on the hill on table two. Eight four up on Chris Alexander. In a moment. Giannis Suta Camino. Well, he's on the hill right now. In a moment, he could be on cloud nine. Just got to hold himself together. He's going to be feeling it because it's been that type of match. It's been back and forth. Is he going to play it hard off the rail? Oh, he's drawn it back off the top rail. How about this for a shot? He has hit that superb. This can only go wrong now from the eight to the nine. He's gonna get a nice angle on the eight. So, well, I say that, he's got a little bit close to his work, it's okay. So this is the only shot he can go wrong. If he gets on the nine, a little bit funny. Jason's only chance is if Jonas leaves a 50-yard nine. Does he draw it back? That looks a little bit funny. Can he top it through with right and spin? He's drawing it back. Pace is key. 
Where's the cue ball going to finish? It's going to finish okay. It's just there. He can stun this round off the two. What a match, this nine ball to send Shaw home. Vamos! Vamos, says Jonas Sute.